Uh, my name is Mike Stevens. Uh, I run the uh, learning design team at Orion Learning, uh, as she said, and I'm just going to talk to you for 10 minutes about the challenges, challenges associated with onboarding. So, um, just a little bit about Orion Learning. Um, we're an award-winning learning and development company uh, with over 22 years experience and we deliver a full spectrum of, of, of innovative digital learning solutions that deliver results. And you know, trust a partner with lots of, lots of well-known organizations. Um, we're in the hallway over there and Natalie and Emma Jane will, will, will be happy to talk to you about all our offerings, and also um, candy apples uh, for those with the sweet tooth. Um, okay. uh, our strap line is learning that works. Uh, so we, pr we provide e-learning, provide platforms or support platforms, and also consultancy. But as the person who runs the learning design team, obviously I'm very much concerned with e-learning. So we're going to be talking a little bit about how to apply that uh, to, to, to onboarding, especially onboarding in the, in the online environment. So, when we talk about onboarding, um, it's, it's, there's a challenge associated with it, but there's particularly a challenge associated with onboarding in the online environment, which is, of course, more relevant than ever. Um, it's costly for the employee, and it can also be bewildering for the new hire. Um, so, you know, traditionally it involves a number of presentations that are presented very close to the start date of the new hire, you know, introductions to some key employees, introduce the, you know, the CEO, the culture, um, some, some of the HR documents and so forth. And this, you know, you, you're all aware of it, you've all been through it, you've probably put people through it yourself, and you've had some negative experiences, some positive experiences, I know I have, I've probably provided some negative experience, onboarding experiences <laughs> to some of my own team. So less said about that, the better. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of the cost, uh, Here's a nice statistic. It costs $3,000 to onboard a new employee. So that's quite an interesting statistic when you consider the fact that um, you, know, you might be onboarding 10 people, say, at a, you know, if, you're, if you're a large organization. So that's 30 grand straight away that you've got to kind of put into just educating these people. And it is an educating experience. Um, and when, in terms of Putting yourself into the mind of, of the new hire. I'm sure we've all been here. What would you like? What would you expect? What would you hope from uh, a, an onboarding experience? Well, you would like to be able to kind of have a kind of a nice airy office, uh, be around some dynamic people, chatting like, like we are today, having some fun, adapting to the new role, getting to feel valued as quickly as possible, and also being productive as quickly as possible, or at least being seen as being productive as quickly as possible, and, and feeling like a reliable part of the team, getting to know your colleagues especially, and making some new friends. And that's, that's the ideal kind of situation that we would like to have, but what we actually tend to get is uh, presentations, and lots of them, PDFs, especially so in the online situation. Um, so you get some presentations about the business, about the culture, some introduction to some key employees, as I said. Um, lots and lots of reading. And frequently, in the online environment, this can be self-paced. You're expecting the new hire to do this for themselves. Um, but really, and by the way, we, back to that statistic of 3,000 3, per, per employee, uh, per new hire. 17% of new hires leave an organization during the first three months of employment. So that's quite a quite a you know, scary statistic that the money that has been put into that, that employee has is, is already gone down the drain. Um, I'm going to introduce you to a character, Sinead, not her real name, um, uh, but this is a real life example. Um, so not long ago, Sinead had a poor onboarding experience, so just, I'll just uh, read it out. Um, so she said, I was sent to a conference room where someone from HR helped me to complete a bunch of forms. I was not introduced to anyone. I had no one to go to lunch with, and no one had set up my computer access. So I sat there and stared at the wall. By the end of the day, I felt like I had made a terrible mistake in leaving my old job. Now that's in, that's in the physical environment. So you can imagine how this kind of situation, which is not uncommon, I think we've, 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 we're all familiar with this, how, how would that be applied in the online environment? It would be even worse. Um, I know I have a, some stories of my own. At one point I started a job and on day one, I was presented with a, a stack of reading material um, by the person who I reported to, 
and um, then she said, okay, uh, there you go. Um, this is the project you're on. Here's the reading material. I'm off on holidays for three weeks. And so it was a case of sink or swim, uh, talking to people, going up and saying, oh, I'm sorry, what's your name? And getting names wrong, finding my way around the building. That was a, that was a particularly um, tricky situation. Um, so how do we address this? Um, well, the, the most obvious way to, to address this and the most productive way to address this is to plan and structure. They're, people are much more likely to stay with the company if they have a structured onboarding program, feel valued. Um, and here's another statistic, 69% of employees who have a positive onboarding experience are much more likely to remain with the employer for three years. So that's you know, easy to say, we need to structure how do you do that in the online environment? When you don't have those you know, casual conversations in the kitchen where you find out about somebody who's not even on your team, but they'll give you a little bit of gossip about so-and-so, oh, he's a bit of a jerk, and so-and-so is good to go to, if you need to find out some extra information about whatever. But also just the casual conversations you had just within those, you know, a mentoring situation or, or, or a training situation. How do you replicate that in, in the online situation? Um, well, as somebody who comes from uh, online learning and who, who deals with this all the time, obviously it's, it's a no-brainer that online learning can help because we've been developing tools for, for you know, eons in, in, in communication, collaboration, and interaction. So it can help with that effort. And the facilitation of, of these kinds of online uh, onboarding experiences has, you know, has never been more feasible, really, because we have the tools to do it. Um, so, for example, could a platform uh, or framework integrate, how, how could the platform uh, integrate the new employee? How could it provide opportunities to, to learn about the company, the culture, the pillars, uh, opportunities to communicate with colleagues? Uh, how can you provide a general introduction to the new hires, uh, new area and role? The idea would be to save some time and resource needs, but the main thing is to remove the need to be physically present. And the idea is as well that this could all be done in advance of day one. So that instead of spending you know, weeks and weeks and weeks kind of getting up to speed, the learner could actually do this in advance. Um, one option, for example, of a framework is uh, Bytecast, which uh, we at Orion um, uh, uh, sell, and it's, it's a really, really good tool that it's, presents bite-sized pathways. You can rapidly build um, these kind of uh, combinations of curated and created content, whether that's streamed uh, YouTube videos, podcasts, content you create yourself, SCORMs with interactive pieces. Um, but that's just one example of uh, a tool that can be used to, to create a pathway for a specific need. And it is about specific needs. So for example, if we, if we meet Pat, and Janet will talk about Pat, who is our new hire, uh, uh, and his needs. As, as we said, he wants to adapt to a new role. He wants to feel valued. He wants to be productive and reliable and get to know his colleagues as soon as possible. So it is a very specific pathway for Pat. It's, and every pathway is different, depending on the person. Here's an example of a you know, a typical onboarding path, very, very complicated. Um, I won't go into the ins and outs, but you can see that over the course of, you know, days and weeks and months, Pat is kind of going through a huge amount of um, meeting with various people, getting bamboozled by all kinds of different things, whether it's meeting with HR, meeting with the tech team, getting up to speed with Slack and email, um, you know, finding all about, uh, you know, his role and his assignments, his projects, and meeting the project team. How do, you, how do you reproduce that for an individual who has a very individual and specific needs? Um, so there's challenges around that. So and really things we need to avoid. So we have to avoid, as I said, this, this idea of one size fits all. That's, that's not going to work. Um, instead of focusing on just comfort, com, uh, company information, you need to focus on what Pat needs. Um, you need to avoid having you know, a lack of structured me support mechanisms. You can have a buddy or a mentor. Um, the social aspect, that's, that's gone in the online environment. How can you, how can you tackle that? You know, can you facilitate interactions with others? How can you encourage that? Can you create assignments? How do you avoid anything that means Pat doesn't know what is expected of him and what his timelines are? So meeting some of these challenges, and Jan is going to talk about these. I'll just introduce some of these. So you could... Get Pat, for example, to complete some pre-work. Um, do this through email. 
Um, you can set some expectations for them, provide a roadmap of activities to, to reduce stress. We all like structure. Um, you could provide some synchronous uh, online sessions with the manager and with, with other relevant personnel. Some other ideas might be provide some feedback. Get feedback from Pat on the process. Some structured online questionnaires. Maybe some problem-solving assignments. Get him to, to feel motivated. Get him to feel engaged. Get him interacting with others. How do you do that online? Um, and you can, you know, as you're doing this, it's important that you ensure all tasks are relevant to, to, to Pat's kind of new work area. And uh, obviously an online mentorship program is also good. So Jan's going to talk about all of those. These are just some of the challenges that, that we identified. And um, maybe we'll find a way that we can kind of turn those uh, challenges into opportunities. Cheers. Um, so basically what I'm going to talk through is the challenges that um, Mike outlined there, um, we worked as a project team to um, address some of those challenges. We brainstormed, we did our user jobs, we done methodology to develop out personas of the new onboardee, as you mentioned, Pat. We also have, and I'll, I'll show you who these people are. Now we call this project Obo because it just lended itself to online and the onboarding environment, um, which our PM Greg actually came up with. So we really ran with it and we were using a lot of puns now around this. So these are the Obo players. So um, Pat is the new onboardee, Alex is Pat's manager. And as you'll see a bit later, we have a chatbot called Mr. Obo. Um, we also have some other people in the network, so you'll, you'll get to see them a little bit. Um, so as Mike was talking about, it's often a one size fits all approach when it comes to um, an, uh, you know, a, um, in any onboarding experience, whether that be face to face or, or online. Um, and what we wanted to do is make sure to try and make it as personalized as possible. Um, so this is the kind of initial screen that Pat will be introduced to if he's using the, the Obo platform. So he'll get a welcome from his manager, very personalized, making sure he feels welcome to the, welcome to the organization. And then he's encouraged to start building out a user profile. Now, user profiles aren't new to anybody, but what we wanted to do is move a little bit away from making it a user profile about his skills and his job and all that kind of stuff and try to bring in more of that social side of things. So as you can see here within that user profile, um, he is encouraged to share things, not only his work and you know his, his skills and stuff like that, but also his interests, things he's you know interested in, activities that he likes to carry out, say, in his spare time. And it's to build out a really holistic view of Pat as a person so that we can address some of the social stuff a little bit later, especially in the online space, as we know people can feel a little bit isolated. Um, if they want to be working from home, say, for example, full time, they might never actually really meet anybody. Um, so you can see he's able, he can see his progress through this as well. So very much the whole way through this platform, we want to make sure that um, people are aware of their progress, what they have to complete, um, and kind of one of the challenges around, you know, ex setting expectations for the new onboarding and onboarding and them knowing what they need to do and where they're at. Um, so again, as Mike mentioned, it can be very much a push versus a pull situation where obviously we know organizations have to share a certain amount of information with the new onboarding. There's certain things, boxes that have to be ticked and we're aware of that as well. But I think, you know, we really want to look at that more of pull approach where the new onboardee gets to pull information from the organization when they need it or if they have a particular question about something or if they want to ask somebody a particular question at a particular time. So it's very much just in time kind of experience. And you can see there, Mr. Obo is the chatbot who, sorry, we're looking at as kind of being, you know, the, the kind of go to person for if you have a, a, a question that you might feel as stupid as a new person. As a new person in an organization, you always feel like a bit, Ooh, who do I ask or am I going to sound stupid? So we're kind of using Mr. Obo for that. So the kind of basic day to day stuff, when do I get paid? Any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's a direct messaging part of it as well. And again, to address the point that, I mean, a lot of organizations already have, you know, things like Slack. But what we want to do is build a platform that's focused solely on the onboarding experience, that everything in this platform is about onboarding. And it's not necessarily dealing with other aspects of the organizations like the learning management system, although we could look to integrate it. But I think it's very important to make sure that the focus is on this onboarding experience and um, so that, you know, that, it, that, that the focus is there and that everyone's addressing the onboarding challenges. Again, there's direct messaging. So um, as I said, Pat can, can talk to people in its organization and, and to his manager and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also what we were saying earlier, I suppose, is that, you know, about the information, it's often very general as well. And what we want to do is try to make it as personalized to Pat, his role as possible. Um, as again, we know that people have to kind of, 
do that kind of standard training and, and the EHS stuff and all that kind of stuff. But we need to personalize some of the learning paths to make sure that no matter what Pat's role is, that he's getting, you know, training that's totally relevant to his role. Because we've all been in, right, an onboarding experience where you're getting reams of information about stuff that you, you're, you're sitting there going, this is not relevant to me or my role. But it's just that the organization is just giving you all this information because they're afraid not to. So we're trying to make it as personalized as possible for Pat so that he kind of doesn't disengage or whatever. And um, he can work through it at his own pace, as we know from a learning, an adult learning perspective, learner autonomy is really important and flexibility, particularly when you're online. But he, he will be getting encouragement as he goes through and you'll see that a little bit later as well, how Alex can kind of provide him with encouragement to complete his tasks and his learning. Um, so again, you know, about new recruits needing to know what's expected and what timelines. Um, we have kind of these lovely kind of progress um, areas. We have an opportunity for him to see where he has his with his training. He can also, there was another element that came up when we were doing the, the workshopping around that, in that we want to learn from new onboardees to make, to continuously improve the experience and make it better for the next person. So what we want to do is provide onboardees an, like an opportunity to um, comment on the training, you know, say to other people what they liked about it. He can read what other people liked about particular elements or what they learned in particular. Um, so it's kind of like continuously, I suppose, iterating this onboarding experience. But also, and a really important part of this, this whole platform is the, the thing around buddies. So he's going to be matched to buddies who have identified themselves as, you know, being particularly knowledgeable or really interested in a particular topic. So he can go to those people and know that they're the people who could answer his questions. Um, so again, you know, the encouragement, a sense of accomplishment is really important for, for adult learners. Um, and so he can see, like if he wants to see, you know, and it's not a competition, but he can see where other fellow onboardees who started maybe around the same time as him, where they're at in their journey and where he should kind of be. Um, and again, he's, he's able to provide kind of um, feedback on the experience and to share his own views as well. So, um, and the, just to say as well, these lovely wireframes were developed by Luciana, who's done all the great work for Learnovation today as well. So I see her over there. Um, so they look really good. So thanks for that, Luciana. Um, so again, you know, with the scheduling, you know, to know what's expected in the timelines, there's going to be to-do list um, within this platform. There's task progress, as, as you can see there, there's a schedule um, and then all the things that he has to do on a particular day. So he knows what's coming up and there's no surprises and nobody's setting up a Zoom call at the last minute. Um, and I, the thing we like about it is that, again, you know, a lot of organizations have their Google calendar, they have whatever they have in the organization already, um, and that can be integrated into this. But again, what we want to do is kind of have everything that a new recruit needs to do for onboarding all in the same place. So they're not going, oh, I need to go here for this, I need to go here for something else. And it takes away that element of confusion and lack of understanding about what they're trying to do. So it's just to make it a kind of a more seamless experience for them. Um, and this was one of the big ones really that came out of the research around, you know, people needing mentorship and a buddy and stuff like that. Um, so based on when Pat fills in his profile about his skills or his interests and stuff like that, he's matched to a network of colleagues or buddies based on that profile. Um, and then he can jo join things like social groups. So as Mike mentioned earlier, the socialization element of onboarding is often overlooked in the online space. Um, and what we want to do is ensure that there's a social element to this whole experience, that he can meet people online who are interested in similar things. If there's an event coming up, he can join it. Um, so it, he's basically matched to a lot of this, the, these interests and stuff based on his profile, but then he can actually add himself to different groups and stuff like that as well. Um, and again, chatbot Mr. Obo is there if he has any questions. Um, and so what I felt was really important was that with an online onboarding experience, you often are introduced to people within your own team who you have to kind of interact with and you have to kind of get to know and you know, you know you'll be working with them. But what's often missing is the people in other teams that you might need to get to know. Um, so you might need to have to work with someone in finance, for example, or engineering or validation or whatever it is in your organization. Um, so what we want to do is make that a lot more explicit for somebody who's in the remote space because often it's kind of you know, implicitly done, like you might bump into someone and go, oh, actually, you're the guy I need to talk to about whatever. Whereas what we want to do is set up that network for Pat so that he knows and he's really aware of all the people that he needs to know in the organization. And then he can kind of reach out to those people and, you know, set up meetings with them and stuff like that to learn a bit more about what he'll be doing with other people and other teams. Um, so again, the social thing, you know, access to groups, forums, discussion boards, we have all that kind of stuff within the platform. Um, so we can be added to those special interest groups. Um, I see Luciani put the happy Friday with beer in there like that one. I'd probably join that one myself. Um, but it's nice that, that there is that social element, even if it's in an online space that we can do. And it's something we do at Learn a Bit all the time. We do weekly challenges. We do a lot of online kind of social type stuff, which is great because it does make us feel like we're part of the organization, even if we're not in the same room or whatever, which is great. 
And this is one, so um, I talked about the direct messaging. We, we did brainstorm maybe having a kind of a map where Pat could kind of see if there's people that live near him that work with him. Um, we're not sold on that 100%. It's something we're still thinking about. But it's also maybe useful if there's someone you want to avoid, you know, where they live. That could be useful too. But like, you know, we're still thinking about it. So we're still brainstorming some of these ideas. But, you know, he has the choice to see if there's people that live nearby and if he wanted to meet people physically for a coffee, which is kind of nice. Um, so we talked about Pat's challenges. So Pat is the new onboardee, but also we took into account the persona of Alex, who's Pat's manager. Um, so obviously Alex needs to see um, how her onboardees are progressing. Um, and she has a dashboard of all of her current onboardees. You see here all, all the different people that are on her team and where they're at and all that kind of stuff. And she can assign tasks to them. She can provide feedback to them, which is great. Because we do find, I suppose, in the online space too, there's a risk of people disengaging if they're not been, you know, involved in conversations or they're not, I suppose like meeting people quite regularly and stuff like that. So this is an opportunity for her to see where everybody's at and if she needs to check in. So like this is an individual um, dashboard for her just for Pat. So she can see exactly what he's doing. If he hasn't done training for a while, for example, or if he started to disengage, um, this is something where she can see that this is happening and she can reach out and say, hey, Pat, you know, is everything okay? Do you wanna have a call or whatever? So nobody feels like they're doing something on their own completely, that they actually have a manager who cares about them, which I think is really important. Um, so what's next for Obo? So we we've done what we call like the first two stages of this project, where we did the core research um, and the state of the market first. The second part was very much building out our personas, doing our jobs to be done, validating our personas with real real life Pats and Alexes. So we talked to lots of Pats and Alexes and did um, interviews with them, and we did surveys. Um, but what we really want to do is build out the platform. So we have it wireframed. We have you know sort of um, a very basic prototype. But what we need is, I suppose, our industry members to give us you know i suppose the go ahead or you know a solid kind of agreement that they would like to take this on that we could build it out and then we could trial it with real life users which would be really really exciting for us um, and that's what we're really hopeful about we would really love to actually see this in action um, and also to say i suppose it's a it's a big platform in itself but when we've been talking to people about potential commercialis commercialization, there is also an opportunity to maybe take some of the elements within that and integrate them into what the organization might already have, so into your LMS or whatever. But this is what we're trying to do, and we are really excited to get the tech team at Learnivate involved to start prototyping it and building it. Um, so that's where we're at. So thanks very much. I would suggest if anyone has any questions, put them in the Slido. You obviously, you can contact myself and Mike anytime. Um, but we will be, I'll be running the corporate session this afternoon at Richie and Bilal. So if there's any questions about this, put them in the slide and we'll try and address them in the corporate session. Thank you very much.